All right, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to let you talk some more. I'm asking you a question, so you'll still get to talk. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier that there is a continuity uh, between going all the way back to Marx uh, to G, uh, the guy you just mentioned. Uh, what What is that continuity? Uh, if you want to get super sure, specific, yeah. you can, I but I think that's pretty important. I don't want to ramble, but right. I would describe it yeah. to simplify it concretely. It's the dialectic between form and content. So for Marx, this originally takes the form of the kind of the whole uh, structure apparatus or whatever you want to call it, the project of German idealism culminating in Hegel's uh, system. For Marx, uh, the real content of this system, the real truth of the insight of Hegel lies in the material reality of the proletariat. So this is the first way in which Marx uh, initiates his kind of discovery. Real human, and then in the case of Feuerbach, Feuerbach has an imagined humanity right uh, he's a humanist but his human is idealized marx says no this is uh, humanity is no idle abstraction of the imagination humanity is a real and determinate humanity specifically as it takes the form of uh, the proletariat then uh, lenin comes and lenin uh, is dealing with the institution of Ger uh, european social democracy and he's trying to bring this into uh, russia so and lenin discovers that the real essence of this institution of the party form cannot actually be found in the ready-made forms legislated by the party itself but must be uh, you must delve deeper and deeper into the ground into the soil of the russian peasantry right so it's this and then you can keep going with stalin uh, it's stalin doesn't actually call himself a, an innovator of marxism he just says he's the most faithful servant of lenin and Stalin's collectivization and his wager upon the Russian middle peasants is an extension of Lenin's fundamental discovery. And then Mao continues this by almost eliminating the significance of the industrial proletariat altogether and recognizing that the fundamental class differentiations are to be found in the Chinese people, specifically the Chinese peasants more generally. So then Mao is this more kind of populist uh, contribution. Then with Deng Xiaoping, Deng Xiaoping is the final nail in the coffin um, to the Soviet Leg the legacy of the Soviet-inspired system of central planning, which actually Mao was always in tension with and contradicting from the very beginning. Um, sorry, there's kind of an echo. So with Deng Xiaoping's reform and opening, uh, reform and opening up, the real innovation and insight of Maoism, which um, is uh, striving away from this kind of top-down, centralized, or overly centralized kind of um, institutionalized bureaucratic Soviet system where everything is just planned, to a system that actually develops socialism from the soil of the Chinese people uh, themselves. And now with the Xi era, after the development of the forces of production, we are now opening into a new era of an authentic communist morality. So the question remains, now that we have developed the forces of production, what is the aesthetic, cultural, uh, so on and so on? What values will define the orientation of the development of the forces of production? And this kind of spiritual uh, orientation is what defines uh, the Xi era. So that's just 